Hello and welcome to Murphy's Garden and I'm carrying on with the rose pruning. It's a big job. Um, we've done most of the shrub roses so they're all done and with the shrub roses we wanted that sort of nice open goblet effect allowing lots of air throw, flow through the rose plant. Um, slightly different principle with climbing roses so we'll come on to that in a minute. There are a lot of similarities um, a bit like the um, shrub roses we want to get rid of any diseased dead or damaged branches. Um, and also we cut out weak stems as well, but you don't want to reduce them by a third like we did with the shrub roses because you want those nice long stems to cover the trellis um, and to get as much coverage as possible. And if you just tie the roses in straight in an upright direction, you just find you get roses at the very top. So you want to put these nice lateral stems across the trellis and you'll find you'll get um, um, growth going upwards and lots and lots of blooms all along the stem. So that's the principle, that's what we want to do. So um, before we begin, just a few things that you will need. Um, so like before, the um, secateurs, and it's always good to have if you've also got some loppers, particularly if you're doing it on older rose plants, which I am. So I've got some loppers, so if there are any, um, you know, dead, diseased or damaged bigger branches, I can cut those out, but also any forward facing branches that you find you can't really bend back, they're not very pliable, so you can just cut those out. Um, and then you can use string, um, which I do normally do, but um, you can, the trellis behind me is in need of a paint. Whether I get to it this year, I don't know, but in case I do, I thought if I tie it all in, then it'll be a real pain when I have to cut it all off again. So I thought I'll use this nice thin wire. Um, it's got that rubber coating on it, but then I can just um, release the roses, paint round it, and then tie them in again. So I've been using that and I've actually found that quite good. So we'll carry on doing that. And then really important, some goggles. So if you wear glasses, that's okay, but some sort of eye protection, sunglasses or um, safety goggles are really important because what you find when you train the stem in that lateral shape, they have a tendency to want to spring up and they can spring up and, and catch you in the eye and um, could do quite a lot of damage. So really important to wear um, eye protection. And then gloves. Gloves are a bit, it's good when you're bending down the thorny branches, but sometimes when you're trying to do the fiddle of the tying in, you have to take them off. So gloves are going on and off, on and off, but I do need them. So let's crack on and um, get to work. Murphy um, is feeling a bit sorry for himself because he's got a sore paw. I don't know if it's related to me pruning roses, whether he's trodden on a thorn or something, I don't know, but he's got a bit of a sore paw. So he has come outside, he's got his little booties on, which he doesn't really like. Um, and he's looking a bit sorry for himself and it's a bit chilly so he, he'll stay out for a little while and then I might put him back in again but let's get to work. So here you can see we've done this sort of fan effect with this rose and the idea of laying the branches down in a more lateral format means that you're going to get um, roses all along the stem. As you can see here we've got some buds forming here but that could be pruned off this bit. So you've got a nice bud there and a nice bud there. In fact I need to revisit some of these but what happens is with um, with, the, with any plant really, there's something called apical dominance. So that means the strongest growth always goes to the tip. So if you just have it going in an upwards direction, you'll get roses at the top, but nothing along the, along the stem. And by bending the stem down, means that you're gonna promote that growth back upwards all along the stem. So it's really good if you can do that. You see here, look, all those little buds, the form flowers. Now this rose, which is at the end, um, it's actually started to grow through the trellis. You can just see it going through there. And I must admit, when I first put this trellis up, I thought that would be a good idea just to let the rose, wind the rose branches through and that, so that you could have effectively like two plants for one. So you've got growth on this side and on that side. But I quickly learned over the, over the time that it's actually not a good idea to weave roses in and out of, um, of, of trellis because 
what happens is they get bigger as this one's done and then when this rose when this um trellis panel eventually rots or falls down in the wind which it inevitably will then you're a bit stuck and you, can, you have to cut the whole rose off to replace the panel so um I think it's probably not a good idea to do that but rather have separate rose plants on each side of the trellis so that's my um just by trial and error that's what i find but having said that this one does look good and it's as i say it's coming through the trellis so we'll just go with it for the moment until this panel needs replacing in the future and then i have just mulched the area with um some horse manure and also some ash from the fire that's wood ash from our fire so that provides a bit of potash this one is a fairly newly planted rose this is the um, Gertrude Jekyll and as you can see it's just not long enough to tie onto the trellis so I'm hoping for some good apical growth put on some nice long stems and then when they're long enough I can tie them in so we're a bit lacking down this end of the trellis we've got another fairly newly planted one there there and that's another Gertrude G call over there as well. So um, yeah, it just needs to put on a bit more growth and up and up there too. So yeah, there's not much coverage at all this end, but we have got clematis. So the clematis has been cut back as well. So we're back up by the, um, the, the shrub rose that we did last week, the Olivia Rose. And we'll just look at this climber. So this is just quite a small bit of um, panelling. It's not, not even six foot. So in order to get the coverage, these branches are quite pliable. So what I've done is just bent them back on this themselves. So they're going round and back on themselves. And that just gets as maximum amount of coverage as possible to get as many blooms up this rose as we possibly can. And similarly here, we've also got another climbing rose. I've just kind of made a sort of fan effect. And this rose is another one that's, that I did weave in through the trellis. So. There's a lot going on the other side as well. So we'll pop round to the vegetable patch and just finish that one off too. So I'm now by the fence line. This is the hornbeam walk. And this rose here is quite a vigorous rose. And in the summer, it was going right up into the hornbeam, which it still is. So I want to get control on that and utilize these lovely long stems, which we've got and to go right the way along the wire that we've got this wire along the fence. So we can tie it into that. So right, we'll get on and do that. And um, yeah, just take control of this rose and take advantage of the fact that we have got these good stems. out really well that rose it's just got just the right number of branches to tie into the four tiers of wire and um, right here you can see so we want some more growth to come down to go along this wire but the apical growth will carry on growing up so as long as I remember just to pull it in as it grows to tie it back in again rather than let it go up into the hornbeam so um, as you can see there's lots of um, buds all along these um, branches so we should have good cover of flowers 
So that's the climbing roses done. Another job ticked off. Thank you very much for watching and join us again in the next video. Bye for now.